We are internet friends. It's our first time meeting. We happen to be in New York at the same time. I'm Which is insane. Work. I'm from Boston. I'm also from Boston, and we, like, didn't know. We just liked each other's, like, just, they're, she is such an expressive and, like, a free spirit that doesn't let anything or anyone stop her from creating. And that's why I like Michaela too, because I was, I just saw you spray painting clothes. I was like, this is my new friend. I, she doesn't know it yet, but like. And then I think you like commented maybe like once or twice and then I go to your page and I'm like, this is like the most colorful, expressive, cool thing I've ever seen. With, with the like the faces that you put on all of the animals, I'm yeah. like, this is my, I do that too. I do the same thing. Like, Different style, but similar, like just similar like, energy. I feel yeah, like very just colorful and like like playful, playful and just like not taking life too seriously because it's yeah, like so easy. exactly. It's so easy to get caught up in everything can feel heavy if you let it, but then like that's why art is just such a powerful outlet for just like letting yourself like connecting with who you were when you were five, like. That's, that's what I was so happy when I was that's five. That's exactly it. And today, do you have what I just gave you? Do you have it in your pocket? Oh. No, not the, not the book. The... This guy. I have been handing out woolly worms Woo. today as I called it free worm on a string day. And people have been coming into Les Mis. We're here in New York City. And I've just been handing out free worms on the string that have QR codes to the event I'm doing here on Sunday. <laughs> and this is amazing because I actually saw her. I think, did you make like a sweater or something? With I it? did. I made a shirt with, I and glued I, like a hundred woolly like, worms to a shirt. I was like, what are these things? Like, this is the, I love the, I'm like, I, I've seen these. I remember these. But I was like, okay, that is like my energy. Like, I want this, like, I want this. I want these. I know, I do too. I want them everywhere. I'm like, They're I feel like hilarious. for my wedding, I should have them like in my hair or something. You should I don't know, I have on, ideas. You should be on your veil, at least. At least oh on a veil. You should do genius. a veil of woolly worms. I love that. Even if it's not for my woolly worms. Yeah, woolly worms okay, worm She also got me, I don't remember what it was, but you basically like said, oh, you should try airbrushing. And yeah. like, it like took me a second when I was doing it. And then the second I figured out how to like the pressure and all that. Yeah. Like this is really easy. It literally just feels like you're drawing with a marker and like, to get, I have to pay clothes. Like you have to be, to get it to like stick and set in. Yeah, like, you can't, like, and airbrush is clothes. easy. Mm -hmm. Airbrush is easy. Yeah, I saw you spray paint clothes, which I love to do too. And then yeah. when I got into airbrushing, yeah, you can be really precise. The with only it. thing I, I'm a little like when I'm creating, I'm like a little impatient, so I have to go wash. You, I have to wash it in between each color. So I have two airbrushes. Oh. One for color, one for black and white, or black. And do you end up mixing in the colors? Because sometimes you could like mix them, and then it kind of ends up, yes. it kind of ends up brown. So I'll pour out the color. I have a bunch of glass jars, and then I'll pour the colors into the glass jars to save them for later. Um, and then I'll put in a new color that's similar on the color wheel. Okay, So okay. if I'm doing like a pink, next I'll do an orange, and I'll like work my way through the color wheel so that the colors are similar. That's really smart. Okay, yes, I need to like take note. I'm gonna revisit this video, and I needed that bit of information. Yeah. By the way, are you getting it from Michael? Are you getting stuff from Michael's Craft Store? Uh, some things, definitely. A lot of like things my are canvases. Michael's. My yeah. canvases are all Michaels. I always go to Michaels for like the massive canvases. What about? I, I feel like do you do crystal stuff or not as much crystal? Not as much crystal stuff. A lot of glitter. Um, glitter is a big glitter part of my art. Yeah, yeah. yeah Michaels is like my favorite. Like last second. Like if I just like I feel like if I need like anything random, like anything you can dream of, that's just yes. like oh I want to like googly eyes. Like I'm oh my gosh, Michaels. googly eyes are big for me. I actually got. I shoes mean, you got and little, I, did you put these? On no, no, they come like that. You just you buy them in bulk online, and then you give them to people in New York City, and uh, <laughs> I'm like this is like my question your sanity. It's gonna be my good luck charm. I'm oh, gonna, I love like, it. What, what are you gonna name your woolly worm? I feel like it's a he, and I feel like he's like, um, like Philip or something. He's okay. like giving Philip. Yeah. Mine is green, and his name is Kevin. Uh, I like that they both have like basic names. Like I was gonna like get like a little like foreign and experimental, but I just felt Philip felt more. Yeah, I on, wanted something like really basic. That he he's he's like I thought he was like a no little. No offense, called the Kevins of the world. Yeah, sorry, Kevin. That's my cousin. It's my cousin's. Name. I don't know any Philip, so Philip is better than Phil. So we'll go with Philip. Yeah, he's Philip. Just, it has a formality. formality. He's a little sophisticated. Like he wears berets and, and shit. So yeah, like he's he, he likes French baguettes. What's that place over there? There's like a good bread spot. Are you talking about La Durée or something? No, that's like fancy. I feel there's another one that I never went to. It's like. 
So when I lived in New York, I was like, you, you lived in New York. I lived in New York for three years, and or two summers and three three years. I worked in the music industry and was like highly underpaid. No way. In the music industry, yeah, I have a whole. I love that we're like getting to know each other for the world. Yeah, I have a whole like backstory and like I don't really put like what my like I have three businesses and I don't really put my um not everything is tied to creativity. But I don't really put it out there. Yeah, I feel that. I also was a musician for a while. Oh, you were? Um, yeah, I like took classes at Berklee College of Music and stuff. Like did songwriting. Okay. Yeah, like I did a business of music class there because I dropped out of art school and afterwards I was like, I feel like my art school professors didn't know about the art business. They were like, you can go to a gallery maybe, and I was like, you know what? I am gonna question this formality and see if there's other versions of being an artist slash business person and so I studied music at like the business of music at Berkeley and one of the keynote speakers was actually Beyonce's dad it was so wild that's like, super cool yeah he was like heavily heavily involved in yeah he was like her original business. manager yeah. and yeah. stuff and of Destiny's Child and all that so it was really cool to meet him and talk to him and stuff and be like wait so what it, does it mean to build a creative business and realizing that whether it's music or art those creative businesses have similarities and have a lot of artists have visual artists have things to learn from musicians I think a hundred percent and I think it's like always like I just think that you're never gonna like there's only so much when people like try to teach you and like you're trying to like I was talking to someone about this recently and they were saying about like studying the TikTok algorithm and t studying and it's like there's only so much you can get by studying. You actually just have to do. You have yeah. to just start doing it. Dude, and that's 100%. the only way. And like, so I, I represent content creators and until I was putting out content myself, like it's completely changed my perspective on like how much work and time that goes into it. And it's just like, it really is like a full-time business. It's a full-time business being a content creator and like that's why it's so, it's so important for brands to value creators properly. Yeah, and it's, it's work. It's and, a full-time job. And they're they're building these they're these personas, these personalities, but they're really the people that are doing the best are just being themselves on the internet, which is 100%. what you do. And you Thank encourage you. people to do that. And I think it makes some people uncomfortable. People that are really uncomfortable and insecure and just like not like like they're just like in that like judgmental because they go to the internet for validation of their creative work that's where the insecurity comes from in my mm. opinion if you're going to the internet to have someone tell you your art's good you're awesome you're attractive you're whatever if you're going for validation you are going to get burned on the internet you are going to feel terrible on the internet if you go on the internet because you have something to actually give the world you don't care that there's people who are going to hate you I go to TikTok, to Instagram. It's an outlet. It's kind of like an outlet. It is. And I do it because I'm like, I feel like I have something to give. I can encourage other people to be creative. I can make art that makes people laugh or smile. And if there are people who don't like that, I don't care because it gave value to someone else. And I'm not going to the even internet if one, for validation. Even, even if it's one person. It's changed people's like, lives, because I swear. Cool, the coolest thing happened, someone that, I, I wish I knew his name, and I think he's coming to your pop-up. So yeah. you're going to get to see him. He's like, I think he was your fan first, or like your He's, yeah. he's some like, fan. Whatever. I think it's someone that Friends. I do know. It might be. You, yeah. I, it, like maybe you've met him or something. He seems really amazing. The fact that he somehow, I don't know how he found me too, but was inspired by my work and made a hat inspired by my work and is wearing it to your pop-up. That's so cool. I was like, did they re does that person realize we're connected? I don't know. I think so. Yeah. Or maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe they're maybe just inspired by both of us. Yeah, maybe not, which would be really cool. That's cool, that, that, I'll that, ask him when yeah, he goes. Yeah, we have to find out because I feel like it might, it could just be by chance. It could be. It could be. And like, I mean, that's why we're, I guess, I don't think it's chance. I think it's on purpose and yeah. everything. I think, I think 100%. everything happens on, I, I'm going to say for a reason. Because I just feel like that's oversaid, but like everything is on purpose. Like timing like is always, it's always intent. Everything is intentional. A hundred percent. And if, if you decide that, like I like to like give meaning, not meaning, but like just like yeah, like make meaningful moments really, yeah, rather than absolutely. making meaning of something. It's just like enjoy the moment, and th there's meaning in every moment. There's purpose in what you are doing and in the things that are happening. I believe that too. I'm like, it's not chance that I was flipping through TikTok and saw you spray painting clothes. I don't think that's chance. And that neither of us is from New York City. We're from New York. And we're in New York. I was time. saying, I literally like have like an hour of time that I was like, you know what? I have to, I have to come meet you. You, wow. I, I literally, I think I saw your like pop up in New York and I'm like, it was Sunday. And I'm like, I really hope she's coming before Sunday. Oh yeah. 
And then here, here I am here on Thursday. Are, yeah. With our woolly worm. With our woolly worm. I, I think I'm like, I, I'm, like Phil. I'm, fi- I'm fidgeting with Philip, but I, it, it just. I love it. It's, it's a really, cool thing to fidget with. It's very relaxing, honestly. I feel like I needed like this in my hands right now. Yeah. Um, But what else? Like, I guess like hate, yeah, like hate on the internet is definitely like, it's newer for me. I haven't really like, because I wasn't putting myself out there, but I think it's like, I actually like have had, like it, it upset me at first. Like I was like, it's Whoa, like. scary. The first time when people are like being aggressive towards you and taking out their aggression on you, that is a really uncomfortable feeling. Cause you're like, naturally when people are mean to you, that doesn't feel good. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're not confident. It just means that you're a person. Yeah. And it doesn't like, feel good when people go at you on the internet and are like, you're terrible. Here's all of the things you have some mild insecurity about maybe. Let me put it at you. Like, yeah, like yeah. And mine was like, it was interesting because like I've definitely like struggled with my body image even though like I'm a pretty like normal size but like my body image is something that like I struggle with. So the fact that like there were comments, I actually ended up being like, wow, this is a really good, the comments were saying like if she were a double zero and I was like, are people like saying I'm fat or this, that, and like that's, it doesn't even matter. Like that's not what was being said, but I was like, this is, even if that, that was what was being said, it did, it's just it like. It highlights things yeah, for I was, like, I was like, oh wow, like this is a really, and I just feel like I'm 27, so like I'm not, like I'm older, I'm an old, there are TikToks for anybody, but like the main people that are on TikTok are like younger people everyone's on TikTok, but I do think it's, like, it has the power to, like, make a positive impact on on the youth, and that's something that, like, I think that, like, we can really do. Absolutely. We can do through our color, through our conversations. Like, I love how you talk. Like, you're not just an artist. Like, you're really, like, advocating. You're advocating for just, like, self-expression, just being yeah. yourself. And, and imperfectionism. That's, like, I love um, that. that's the number one thing I advocate for, for people is be comfortable with being imperfect. There is no such thing as perfect. Do not go after perfect imperfection is something to be celebrated that's what makes us human and not machines i love that awesome thing and it makes us feel good i love that so much because as a recovering perfectionist same i think that i think that most artists are a recovering (laughs) or i guess i'm a perfectionist but i have to like art is a way to let go of that it is people either use art to make themselves more perfect or more hard on themselves or they use it as a way to feel freer and happier. And you get to make that choice as an artist. You get to make that choice whether art is gonna serve to make you a happier person or more miserable. You have to make and that it's choice. it's such a powerful, it's so powerful if you let, like, you have to like, just kind of like, release your expectations. And like, I'll often find myself, like as I'm working on something, I'll find myself saying, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, this looks so bad, this looks so bad. And then, like, it ends up being my favorite thing I've ever made. Like, I'm, like, just keep, like, work through those, like, self-doubt or whatever. Whatever, like, negative comments are coming up in my head, like, just, like, imposter syndrome, whatever the fuck comes up. Yeah. Then I'm, like, hold on. Just, just stop with all that and just get, get back to, get back to just letting my mind be free. Yeah. And that's something I was actually talking about today with Leah, who's the creator of the store we're in right now. Hi, Leah. Thanks, Leah. (laughs) I was making a mural here in the store today and I was just laughing. I was like, this is so fun. I can't believe I get to come to New York City and make art. So instead of thinking about this is going to suck, this is bad. I'm like, what a wonderful thing it is that I am grateful for that I get to make art. Whether it's your job or whether it's just something you do on the side, it's something you get to do. It's something to be celebrated. You are so lucky to be in the position where you get to create. And instead of focusing on, oh my gosh, is this going to be good? Is this going to suck? Do I suck? No, you get to make art. You get to be a person. It's a celebration of being a human being to me. And it's just like, yeah, it's like, it. it's so subjective that like, it doesn't really matter as long as you're enjoying the, pro- <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> all good, all good. As long as you're enjoying the process of creating, like the process and like the journey, like is so, that's, that it makes me like when I, I struggle with severe severe anxiety so art is like the only one of the only things that like as I'm like especially with spray paint it's like makes me be in the present moment I'm like ooh, like you hear it you see it and like I have very to like grounding. focus on what I'm doing so it just like puts me in the here and now and I think that anything that can do that is so important to like just be in touch with yeah. that and like you never know how something you put out is going to make someone feel and Someone might need, someone needs, someone, I can guarantee that one person needs everyone's art. I don't care if it's a yes. chalk drawing on the sidewalk or a stick figure, whatever it is, someone needs your art and your message because 
when you let it come from your heart, and I know it sounds cliche, but if you just like let it come oh, from you, true. then someone's going to connect with it and feel feel less alone. And I think yeah. that is so important right Someone now. Someone will feel seen through your creation because you are expressing something that they are feeling and don't know how to express. And the other thing is you could actually save someone with your art. You could give them purpose and meaning. I did that. I didn't realize it, but someone sent me a letter to my PO box saying that they like stayed alive. They didn't, you know, oh, end their life because I've they, chilled. Yeah, they watched my videos. They said they watched every single, I have more than a thousand videos on TikTok. They said they watched each and every one and that they stayed alive and they continued to create and they continue to be a person and to celebrate what it means to be a person because of the messages I was putting out there. So I don't care what hate messages I get. I don't oh care my because God, someone is still that, alive because of me. That is the coolest. Yeah, that like it brings cool, me to tears. Yeah, I'm like, I'm getting emotional hearing that. That is like, what what yeah. an amazing, like there's so much good to be had by, yeah. by creative creatively expressing yourself. And yeah, I think just like people feel like, oh, no one feels what I feel. No one is going through this yeah. oh like I'm alone and this and that then you'll like sometimes I'll like read random things on people's clothes and it's like kind of like just like sarcastic and a little dark and I'm like haha I feel that I'm like oh I relate to that yeah and then it's like okay that came from someone's mind so it's just yeah so you're not alone yeah and art when you create art you are telling someone out there that they are not alone and that is such a gift you are obligated to share that gift. You have to share that gift. Like, it doesn't matter how many people are gonna hate on you. I've gotten hate on the internet, you've gotten hate on the internet. It doesn't matter because someone is more confident in the, in themselves. They are creating more because of you and me. And that, and you have inspired me to create more too. So have you, and you're, you're inspiring me to be more like, carefree about it. It's, yeah. It needs to, I want to you be too. in touch with that always. And I think that's like so powerful is like, like even as artists that like have been making art for a long time, I just started sharing my art in the, this in twenty twenty two. But it's just so that like we're always learning and growing and facing our own challenges. Like it doesn't. Someone recently commented to me being like, "Oh, I didn't think you struggled with any mental health issues because your art's so great." I'm like, "My art's so great because yeah, of because that. Of I swear, say it. No. Girl, I am with you there. Yeah. Like, people I don't like, realize like oh. I create." Because I'm like, I could either lean into the darkness and the difficult things in my life, or I could decide to celebrate what it means to be a person. And I sort of had that moment when I was younger where I'm like, okay, either I could be really sad about life, or I could just say, F it, I'm going to celebrate being a person. I am going to create, and I don't care what anyone says about it. And that's where my confidence comes I from. I love that decision. I love that. Yeah. Like, strong, it was a decision. Strong decision. Yeah, I think that trying to remember if I had a moment like that I like got really depressed and kind of like lost touch with my art but I would always and it's so cool to see like my art started like I was when I was like the most depressed I was in high school um and I think I was more depressed in college but I was depressed I, was just, I feel that I dropped out of college You're yeah I, yeah I was depressed for a while and my art was black and white oh my god does that say so much that like my art was black and white and all now it's art every, was black and white yeah like I was like it's so interesting my art from like, college was all black and white yeah my, same with me and I just like didn't want to add color and then I don't know like what moment I think it was when I moved to New York mm, I met some amazing artists in New York City that is what inspired me I, uh, his name's Mr. Moda. He taught me how to spray paint. There's another guy, Ian Sullivan. That's so cool. Um, that was, they were spray painting. And I was like, hmm. I never thought, let me pick up a can of spray paint. But he, like, just watching the, the process of him doing it, there's a store, there used to be a store called Faith Connection in Soho. It's not there anymore. But I walked in there just by chance one day and I That's saw awesome. them, saw them creating. It was like, what's going on here? So maybe not by chance. No, it wasn't by chance. It's clearly on purpose. But then, yeah. um, yeah, it, that like just like re changed my directory of life that like once I found spray paint. That was, that was great. No, that was awesome. I'm so glad we got to share this with you guys. Thank you for listening to the conversation between me and Michaela. I'm sure there will be many more. And I hope there's many more. Absolutely. I feel like we have different experiences yet like similar beliefs at the end Absolutely. of the day. Absolutely. Like we've reached very similar conclusions with different life lives. Yes. And that's really cool to find people like that. that we you're found like, each other from, we met on TikTok. We so. met on TikTok. So thank you, TikTok. Thank you for you, Paige, for introducing me to Michaela. <laughs> the algorithm, <laughs> the algorithm is hitting. I swear it's working. So thanks for watching, you guys. And, and thank you for the book. <laughs>